uh, Paul Kent, James Triceps Hooper, Gordy Tallison, Maroon. Time for this. From the makers of The Earth is Flat and I'm Only Having One Beer comes... I call BS. Okay, for the final time today, we're going to let the boys uh, let off some steam. I'm going to just start with one as a Rabbitohs fan here, uh, boys and girls. Um, so I'm just going to be a punter, just a South fan. Um, obviously, I'm no expert on rugby league, but I'm a massive South supporter. I call BS on people that say, Paul's already touched on it, you've got to win one to lose one. Well, Parramatta lost two in the 70s. Back-to-back. Manly lost two in the 80s back-to-back. Balmain lost two in the 80s back-to-back. Dragons lost two in the 90s back-to-back. Roosters lost two in the noughties back-to-back. Panthers, you're going down today. You're the biggest imposters since Millie Vanilli. (laughs) Glory, glory. It's the Rabbitohs today. (laughs) And that's my I call BS. Anyone else like to add one? Yeah, Uh, I'll have a crack at uh, (laughs) Ivan Cleary and just the way that he's handled the media this week. I understand that, you know, it got pretty heated between he and Wayne uh, a month ago in the opening week of the finals. And he obviously took some lessons out of that. But, I mean, it's the biggest stage and it's the biggest game of the year. He's knocked back Triple M today for a pre-game interview, which I think he's done every single one of them uh, whenever it's been requested. Over the course of this season, you're right there, Anthony. You got a fur ball or something after Comes that little sort of a hair. I don't know what it is, but anyway, <laughs> that's the panther getting his revenge. Let's <laughs> <laughs> mm. pause. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I just think uh, Ivan, given the magnitude of the game and what's at stake, it's not about dealing with the journalists or not getting along with the media or whatever. You're speaking to the fans, and it's the biggest game of the season, and Penrith are entitled to hear from their coach. I actually think he's done himself a little bit of a disservice with – I I think it's been negative the way that he's tried to really remain in the background. And, you know, okay, that's his style. That's the way he wants to approach it. But um, I I think it's a great The NRL must fix that. There should be just stipulations. Like, the the fact is, this game is supported on on a broadcast deal. 80% 80% of the NRL's income is from the broadcast, which is media. So if you're not talking to the media uh, and selling the game, that's that's a whole of game responsibility. It's up to the NRL to put in minimum standards that the, pl- the coaches, all players, can't dodge. Mm. Yeah. Well, they have. Look, and he, he's, the stipulation Yeah, but is, the minimum standards aren't enough. Like yesterday, no, no, no. Well, this Jason Demetrio did the one. interview yesterday. Who wants to hear from yeah, the absolutely. assistant? And grand final week, who wants to hear from the assistant yes. coach? Would you Hold respect- on, he come up to me two out of finals. So I'm sitting there with Triple M, and we don't pay as much as television. Like, I get that, but we're still partners of the game. Absolutely. And as I said before, you're not talking to me. You're not talking to the guy holding the mic. And, Kenty, you've always told me, I think, you know, when you're over covering the stage, you could walk in and interview Michael Jordan, two hours before he goes and plays. You walk in the, like you're allowed in the dressing room at an NBA game. You're allowed in the dressing room up until 45 minutes before tip-off. There you go. Right? Similar, so, with, an interview. It's similar so, with Major League so, Baseball as well. You can go and yeah, speak right, to the players hours so before So that's what we've got to get. That's why all our players, right, wear NBA gear. You look at every other N- NRL player, they all walk the streets. They've all got their hat backwards. They've got a Jordan or a uh, LeBron James or a Kobe Bryant singlet on because they know them. Because you watch those guys get interviewed every single week selling their brand. And it's not the coach's fault. It's not the player's fault. I think it's the game's fault. And we've got to be stronger on it. Um, and that's another thing that we've got to put up on the hoist in the off season. It's still one of your mm. sayings there, Maroon. And to make sure that they are available to sell the game. Particularly yeah, well when we're in, a, we're in a we're in a country that has four football coats, mm. hey, as opposed mm. to America, which has right. two football coats. And everybody went quiet. You know, I mean, Kenty, and I know that we've had a few um, arguments over this, but because everybody was playing away from home, they weren't talking to their fans. They're talking to Broncos fans. No one wanted to sell the game up here, and I didn't want to say it. So there should have been even m- more more of an um, emphasis on those guys going out the junior rugby league clubs like and all the teams out here just and I know COVID and all that but just adopting an area going out there and helping grow the game of rugby league if you're up here and we've let you in you know I think that it's a privilege and an honour to play our game and I think that you know there's some standards that have got to go with it and one is selling it mm. but I think really we learnt more about you then uh, Hoopsy. Why is that, well, Anthony? Well, I think... From the Corinthians. You as a person who I have tried to help uh, mentally, physically and spiritually, what you've <laughs> what you've really shown there is that this goes back... People would argue you haven't done much there, Anthony. This Well, this goes back to when Ivan 
left the Tigers in the oh, state no, of a yeah, mad yeah, woman's look, breakfast. I'll, I'll, I'll happily and put it on the this, record. I don't yeah. like the way that Ivan left West Tigers. Mm. That still mm. sticks in your craw. Mm. Mm. Uh, and yeah. that club is still paying a heavy price. Mind you. The decisions that... In that, hindsight, it was a good decision. Oh, it's a good decision for him, <laughs> right? But mm. there was obviously, uh, you know, there's, there's a football club at stake as well, Anthony. So oh, I know how yeah. passionate you are mm. about South Sydney. Mm. I was and actually Anthony thinking Seabold. you and... Gordon was referencing about the way that some of the players get around in all the NBA gear. You don don a bit of the, you put a singlet on and get the cap on backwards in the house of almost pain, don't do. you? And I do. Start powering I, away on the stepper. I do. Cindy Lauper on. I do a bit of Cindy Lauper and a little bit of uh, Whitney Houston and Taylor Dane. But what I would say to you, Hoops, in closing, <laughs> always remember, old son, can I, just can turn, I the Taylor Dane, son? turn the other cheek. Turn the other cheek. What's mate, that, mate? I want a Taylor Dane sing. Uh, I'll be your shelter and um, I'll be your shelter. Taylor um, Dane. Uh, feel the night explode. Mm. Tell it to my heart, Taylor Dane. Yeah. Oh wow. So wow. when you next time you're in Sydney, you can come and have a workout in the <laughs> in the uh, in the gym there in Little Bay.